This is the ninth video on using MATLAB in a control context. The focus here is on iterative design for offset. Earlier videos showed how we could use MATLAB to compute and illustrate offset when you've got some form of closed loop. Now an obvious design goal could be to select a compensator in order to achieve a required offset. Now while this often could be zero, there will be times where a small offset rather than a non-zero offset is good enough. This slide illustrates how MATLAB is an effective tool for doing this sort of iterative design. That is where one might use, I've called it here, guided trial and error rather than analysis to get to an answer. So a reminder then of what we covered in an earlier slide. We showed that we could get exact answers for the offset with a few simple calculations. You'll notice I've defined the transfer function, line one. I've defined the compensator. I've defined the closed loop relationship between the target and the error. And then I've used the bode command in order to find the steady state error. Clearly that's assuming a unit step, so the target is one. Now, those people who are a bit more familiar with MATLAB will realize that rather than writing four lines, it may be possible to combine all these into a single line, because that makes my life just a little bit easier. So for example, if I take this command here, I can actually combine that straight into there. So instead of writing G, I will just write TF1, 156. Instead of writing k equals uh, 1 here, I could just put k straight into there, put a value straight in. Instead of writing bode gce, comma 0, I could say, well, gce is given this by this command here, feedback 1, comma g times k, and I can put that directly in there. So if I do all these steps together, you get what's written below. So you'll see I've got my feedback statement here and I've got feedback one comma and then I've got the K times and then you see I've got this TF statement which is my G all right and then I've closed the brackets around the feedback and you'll notice then this bit here is my GCE and I've got GCE, comma zero, which I've put into the bode. Now, my, why might I want to do this? Because it means a single line in the command window does everything I need um, and gives me the steady state offset. So what we'll do is we'll illustrate this <coughs> on MATLAB and you'll see why it can be quite helpful. First then, you'll notice I've got the four commands at the top here where I could do things one at a time. So let's run those four commands. There we go. I've entered G, I've entered K, I've defined GCE, and then I've calculated the steady state offset. And here it is, 0.8571. Now, if I wanted to change K and then get uh, the offset for a different K, I could, for example, put in K equals 2. And then I would have to recreate the closed loop transfer function. There it is. And rerun the Bode statement. That's a bit tedious. Three lines in order to get a new value. Now the alternative is to put everything in a single line, which is what we did here. So you'll notice now, if I just circle this, that the key thing I'm going to vary is this k. That's what I want to change each time I run this line. So what I'm going to do is call that line up again and then I'm just going to change that k. So let's say bef I could try 0.5. So I've just put it straight in. What's the answer? The steady state offset 0.9231. Let's say it's not 0.5 I want, it's 0.8. Put it straight in, there's my answer, 0.8824. Let's say I wanted to try 5. Let's just plug it in, there's my offset. So you notice that fairly rapidly you could get the offset you wanted. So if I said I want an offset to be smaller than 0.5, what value of k do I need? Well, I can see it's going to be bigger than 5. Let's try 6. 
Oh well, that's worked out exactly. I've put in 6 and I've got a steady state offset of 0.5. A little bit of a warning. Offset is only defined if the closed loop is stable, because otherwise, clearly the output's going off to infinity and the offset will too. So the offset formula doesn't recognize this and gives you a number anyway. So we need to check for stability separately. Now the problem with this is it now ne means we need two different calculations. We've got to test for stability, and once we've tested for stability, calculate the offset. Now rather than writing lots of code in a script file, it's probably easier to do this using a function file. And I'll illustrate how we can write a very simple function file which does what we want and is then convenient for iterative design. So I'm going to have a function file which generates the offset and the things I'm going to put into it are G and K. So my system and my compensator. And that function file will do all the computations I need and just throw out the offset. And what it means is I can vary k just by rewriting this line here and putting a different value of k in. Let's see how this works then. So if we switch to the relevant file, here it is. So I've called the file MATLAB 9 files b. That's because it goes with the ninth video. And you'll see it's got inputs g and k written at the top here. So because I've put g and k in, the first line here calculates the transfer function for the error, gce equals feedback 1 comma g times k. The next line calculates the closed loop poles and zeros. Actually, I don't want the zeros, but I've just put that there for completeness. Now, if we are stable, all the poles have to be in the left half plane. So what I've done with this next statement is I've said if the maximum real part of the poles is greater than zero, there must be at least one pole in the right half plane. And I've said I'm just going to display to the command window the closed loop's unstable. If that test fails, then I'm going to display that the closed loop is stable. But you'll notice there's a clever bit here. If I run to the right so you can see, in the very end of that display, I've actually calculated the offset. There's the offset calculation, bowed GCE comma zero. And this num2 string basically takes the number and puts it in a string so I can display it. So let's see how this works. So if I pull that command there and dump it down here, and what do you notice? When I run that file, I get the system is stable and the offset is 0.75. I could put a different k in, let's try k of 3, stable, and the offset's 0.6667. Or I could try 2, stable, offset's 0.75, or I could try 20, stable. <laughs> so you see, with one simple statement, I can still do my iterative design. I just keep using this up arrow to recall my function command, and then change the k manually to what I want, and it gives me the information I need. So this could be a very efficient way of seeing what happens as I change k just by trial and error. Now, obviously, this example is always stable. So what I can do is I can say, all right, let's try a slightly different example. You'll see I'll add an integrator to this system. And now, if I put that into my file, what does it come back with? I'm stable, but the offset zero. And that's what I expect because there's an integrator. Or I could try a gain of 10. I'm stable, but the offset is zero. Again, what I expected. What happens if I increase k a bit further? Let's try 25. Still stable, the offset zero. Let's try 35. And now you notice it comes out with my warning. I'm closed loop unstable. And of course, it's not given me the offset because I am unstable. Now I've got another file here just to show what you might do, which is equally informative. But moving on a bit from trial and error, this is a slightly longer file, but I'll step through it relatively quickly. It's got different inputs. This one has got G, still my system, and then it's got K1 and K2, which are a lower and an upper value for the proportional gains I'm going to try. And you'll see this first line, K equals lin space, says, give me 100 values equispaced between the lower value of the proportional gain and the upper value. And then I'm going to, I've set up a loop. 
I equals 1 to 100, which looks at each of these proportional gains in turn. So I want to see what happens to the system as I change the gain. Is there some pattern? Is there some insight I can get from this? So within the loop, the first statement, get my closed loop transfer function. And you'll notice I've put in here k brackets i. So it takes the ith value of my case. Calculate the poles and check, am I stable with this particular choice of ki? So if I'm stable, then there you see, calculate the offset because that's what I'm interested in. And the interesting thing is this line 9. What have I done there? I've defined a logical variable, stab, that is true if I am closed loop stable. So if I'm closed loop stable, stab i will be true. And you'll notice this else statement. If I'm not closed loop stable, then in this logical variable, I put a logical 0, which means false. So what I'm doing here is I'm storing information about which values of k give me a stable closed loop and which values of k give me an unstable closed loop. Now, why do I need that? Because I've been calculating all these offsets only for the stable ones. And at the end, I'm going to do a plot. I'm going to plot the values of k against the corresponding values of offset. So I can see the picture of what's going on. But clearly, I can only do that for the values of k that gave me a stable answer. So th this stab variable enables me to identify which values I can do the plot for. So there's my function. And now let's run this so you can see the name of the file, MATLAB files, MATLAB 9 files SC. So let's uh, bring this across. That's going to crash because I've not put any numbers in. So let's put some numbers in. Let's say the minimum value of k is 0 and the maximum value of k, which we have, let's say 6. So we run that. Now, in fact, I've forgotten to do something before I run that. I want to put g back to the one without the integrator. And now I'll run that again so we can see what's going on. And if you look at the figure, here it is. What you notice, for a value of k approximately naught, the offset's up here. It's around 1. As k increases, the offset reduces. And you can see by the time I get to 6, the offset's down to a half. If you said, well, that wasn't quite long enough, can I run it up to 25 and see what happens? So there we go. And now you can see what happens to the offset? As k goes from 0 to 25, the offset starts up here near 1 and is getting down, and it's down now down to 0 0.2 with a gain of 25. So it's very quick and easy to get a picture of how the offset varies as you change k. Now, what if I try that other example, the one with the integrator, just for completeness? And what I'll do is I'll run the gains up to 50 here so you can see what happens. If I run that, you'll see there's a very interesting observation. The offset is 0 throughout, which is what you expect, because there's an integrator. However, if you look at this horizontal axis down here, you notice it stops at 30. Because if k was bigger than 30, the closed loop became unstable. And so it's only displayed the values of k which are allowed. And that's what I asked my file to do. So in conclusion, it's very easy to compute numerical values of offset using MATLAB and in parallel to test for closed loop stability. And consequently, short and simple pieces of code can be used to facilitate a sort of trial and error approach to compensate a design or to give you insight into what's happening as you change things. MATLAB does have more advanced software tools and we'll discuss those in later videos.